sure most of you guys have seen this also james whitner the founder and the leader over there of the whitner group that also is the umbrella company for social status and i mean a man Menia, that fucking crazy brand unfortunately has been rumbled in a fucking multi-million dollar sneaker money laundering scheme pretty fucking wild especially when you consider you know his persona how he comes across the quote-unquote free game he's always dropping and whatnot his interviews his collaborations this is a pretty pretty big quote-unquote whale that's out here basically stealing his valor you know what i mean so let's continue here it says james whitner has long been revered as a name in the sneaker industry whitner is a visionary behind the owner of the whitner group an umbrella company that owns um lauded stores like amamania and social status apb and prosper among the sneaker community whitner has been known as more than just a business owner he's a trendsetter storyteller and a champion of the consumer basically i'm gonna be honest i fucking hate the storyteller thing i really do I despise people calling jeans or trousers or whatever it may be called, you know, these couple of names. Just like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just fed up of trying to tell stories through colorways of, of shoes. Trying to tell a story, especially a story about race, segregation, oppression, subjugation, right? Whatever, through the colorway of sneakers is so naff. Can we just get back to people making good colorways? Right, people putting on the, the their, their fucking design app, people pulling out the Pantone book and actually going crazy, as opposed to trying to, you know, turn shoes into a fucking activism point. It's just like, come on, allow it. Let's continue. Um, the news was first reported by WSOC TV, um, Friday, November seventeenth. A civil forfeit case, a uh, forfeit case, sorry, was brought by United States Attorney Dana King and verified ASS, um, IRS, sorry, Special Agent Agent Ranjed. Um, West complaints, complaints want to. So what's that? Yeah, what does it say here? So the compliant wants to seek approximately 1.1 billion um, of US currency seized from Antoine Freeman's apartment. Freeman has been cited as a mentor of, for Whitner and the two relationship dates back to mid 2000s when the first social state campus um, social status location opened in Pittsburgh. The compliant um, cites that Whitner's involvement in the Alessis money transferring business, MTB, interweaved with the various legal activities. YG and a national Chinese, uh, a national Chinese referred to in court uh, documents as a central figure in this scheme. Allegedly distributed and sold sneakers and apparel in Asia and has been conducting business with Witness since 2016. In the documents, there is alleged to be more than 255 occasions in which Witness, his businesses, and others involved received cash from YG, which transaction each transaction totaled more than 10,000. Each under the US law require more uh, filing and a license to do so. Just sounds like some wings of redemption shit, ain't it? Like doing everything in your power to get the most out of everything without doing anything. However, none of the business individuals or entities involved in the money developed proper properly uh, and obviously obtained uh, insecure the register of MTB. Um, PNC Bank has handing a large amount of the decrease of money. Blah, blah, blah. What's happening here? Whitner is also accused of violating contracts with a state. Uh, with a violating contracts Via contract with sneaker companies, one of which is referred in the court documents as an Oregon-based manufacturer, which is probably Nike, by reselling exclusive. Yeah, so this is the thing, right? So this is the main thing that he did wrong here. One of which is referred to the court documents as an Oregon-based manufacturer by reselling exclusive sneakers to unauthorized parties. So essentially backdooring. So this is confirmation, if ever we needed it, that backdooring is a prevalent and frequent occurrence in the sneaker industry or in retail or whatever it may be. They do it all the time. We've known this, especially if you're a kid who grew up queuing outside of stores. If you if you grew up just going to stores and just trying to buy as much limited edition stuff as possible. If you care about tears or stuff, whatever it is, and you're part of the culture and the scene, you would know that backdooring has been a thing for a long time. This is not a new thing. People have been backdooring forever. But the annoying thing about backdooring nowadays, I feel like... I feel like stores now are taking the piss. They're not prioritizing the customers whatsoever. If anything, they are getting in their limited edition run of shoes 
and they're backdooring a bunch, but they're backdooring way more than they're actually selling on release date. So even if they do get a thousand shoes in, most likely you know you're not going to get number one or number 1,000, but you would imagine you might get a high 20s or 30s. And it's like, nah, if you don't buy an initial drop, those first 20 or 50 are already allocated to whatever influence it may be going forward. So that's the only really sad situation about the whole thing. I mean, it continues. This includes a Chinese retailer outside of the US, right? So they will get limited edition shoes from Nike and then they'll resell them, backdoor them to retailers in China for double, triple the markup. I noticed that recently. If you go on places like Taobao and stuff, you'll find legit authentic shoes that are being resold on there for way more than you'll find on StockX and shit. So there's a business of that that exists over there as well. People reselling limited edition shoes and whatever. Because it kind of reminds me also at the time when I was in the sneaker space, I used to buy Air Max 1s or Air Max 90s and shit from JD Sports and resell them to guys in Australia. I wasn't really reselling. I was mostly acting as mo I was mostly acting as a proxy. So they'd give me a small fee on top, maybe £20, whatever. And then I'd go and buy these shoes from fucking Adidas. Sorry, from um, JD Sports, like infrared 90s, like Royal Blue Air Max 1s and the red ones also, right? All these little classic colorways that I guess they weren't able to get over there in Australia and shit and New Zealand and send them over. It was pretty funny that day, that era, man. Which helped me a lot because when I was in uni, when I would say Martin's like, I didn't have a job. I didn't work a job at all. I couldn't get a job, not because I was too good for it, but I couldn't find a job because I had literally no experience. So the only way I actually had money and fed myself and made sure I was all drippy and shit and I was able to go on holiday was reselling shoes. So I've never been against reselling, but I just think unfortunately now it's the most it's the most dominating part of sneaker culture. People talk about prices of shoes all the time. It seems like there's there's always another new fucking pimpled, you know, face kid on Instagram flexing in front of boxes of shoes that they're never going to wear. It's, it's just it become too much of an issue for me personally. That's the main thing. It's become the main thing and not just part of it. Um, it continues. Um, this includes a Chinese retailer outside of the United States, which Whitner and his business um, use code names such as Nevada and Kansas to refer to. The operation facilitated the movement of large amounts of cash, some of which was derived from illegal activities such as narcotics, operation and prostitution. That's the big deal, isn't it? If you're one of these people who believes in activism, who's a social justice warrior, especially when it comes to clothes and sneakers, you're going to be in a little bit of a predicament because essentially they're saying, I'm a mania and fucking social status were propped up by fucking narcotic operations and prostitution which may include sex trafficking that's where that's where their money was coming from that is a quintessential definition of blood money so you know how much do you like you know rocky's outfits and his looks and stuff to excuse such a fucking behavior it's pretty pretty crazy it continues here the money subsequently was introduced into the banking system without proper reporting and regulations a clear violation of the secretary act of course that was him to skirt the taxes right so he was reselling them to chinese people getting the money converted to fucking chinese money and then sending it back to himself so so he wouldn't pay any taxes um it continues here freeman and others involved in this scheme allowed them to profit from the transactions that violated conduct agreement with the oregon based new company it's obviously nike why do they keep saying that do you know what I mean do they think they're gonna get sued they're saying nike anyway how did the money laundering scheme come to a stop i'm eager to hear this actually what do they say about this um yg would purchase sneakers apparel from whitner and then an individual referred to as broker who was based in, in China would receive payment from YG for the items YG has been buying during, uh, sorry, what, what, uh, sorry, buying from Whitner. Money couriers would collect US dollars and once accumulating a certain amount of money would deliver the funds to Antoine Freeman. Freeman, who was also not registered or a license or registered whatever on MTB, began to facilitate handling the cash donor donations from 2019. After 2019, Winter, Winter ceased his, speed, his cash deposits in the Charlotte. The money was also going through the foundation, a brown development corporation operated by Freeman out of Manhattan. Despite Whitner and Associate telling MP, PNC Bank, uh, the, um, Whitner allegedly would advise Freeman on when the money was coming in from Asian individuals on the New York area and after receiving the money would rather would direct Freeman on where to store the money. Whitner also notified that when the cash was mentioned, He'd had 65 of cash received, what person delivered or what the, the, the 
So anyway, that's what he said about that, right? And then if you scroll on the complex article, you actually see some more information. Kershev complex, right? They've actually got a picture of what they found when they walked up to this guy's house, right? So let's read the complex article here. The complex article says as following. Um, ba, 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 ba. Let's see here. The Compass article says the compliances that Freeman and Whitner out colluded with the Chinese money laundering operation to benefit witnesses business. These transactions involved Freeman, Whitner and others comprised of Islanders money transmitting businesses, according to prosecutors. In the response to the complaint, Whitaker Group highlighted its work to support people of color and tell stories that would um, work under uh, under attack despite productive engagement with the U.S. Attorney's Office. We look forward to defending ourselves on business. The picture described of Chinese National Anthem Theatre is that, blah, blah, blah. As you can see, you can see more pictures of there, of the store on the inside and whatnot. Nice fucking display units there, actually. And then let's go back to the article itself. Uh, not that one. Where are you? Where are you? There you go here. Um, how the money laundering scheme operated yg would purchase sneakers like i said before we already mentioned that uh, winter was notified when the cash was delivered the amount of cash received was the person delivered the cash and the person received the cash winner maintained a spreadsheet of these cash deliveries and related operations right so this man is all about his fucking money right he's all about his money he always stands on business there's no fucking around with him right no fucking around with him let's see if we can find it okay nothing going on here how about if we go back to fucking, um, what you call it, that brilliant podcast. Let's see what happens here, what they said around this one, and we continue. Uh, okay, cool, not, nothing said there. Oh, no, this is not the one, is it? It's here. Where am I going? There we go. Whoops, wrong article again. Da. Anyway, going back, so yeah, going back to the complex article. Look at the, look at the fucking stack of money they found at his house. Mama Mia, the civil forfeit complaint contains photos of money seized from Antoine Freeman. This is just in his crib. I, don't, I think that's like a million, isn't it, right? Jesus Christ us. If ever you, if, if ever you wanted a, an evidence of like you did the crime, then finding all of these fucking crisp banknotes in your crib is probably evidence that you did what you've been accused of, right? Um, the civil complaint says that Whitner would initially visit Freeman in New York City and transfer the money back to Charlotte, where Socialist is based. But in 2019, the complaint urges he began employing Brink to transport the money. Whitner instructed those involved um, on how to transfer the money so that he would avoid being flagged by financial institutions. Prosecutors say that between November 2017 and April 2022, Witness's business... Witnesses' businesses did more than $32 million worth of transactions with YG. Oh my God. The money was spread out across 255 transactions with each exceeding $10,000. The complaint says that Whitner did not file the documents legally required for these transactions. $32 million. You see what I said about people being greedy? You see what I said about this a story here? There we go. The Ben Anderson story, right? This guy, 28,000 per month he needed. Defrauding his investors of a total of 8 million. It's just too much. If you're going to do fraud again, you should probably live a life where you're telling the truth and doing the right thing. But if you're going to do fraud to kind of get yourself, you know, up and needed equipment and whatnot and help yourself out, pay the bills, do it once, maybe twice. That's it. Then go legit. Find a real job. Whether it's fucking flipping burgers or working in a bar, find an actual legit source of income don't go out there and do scams forever because you're eventually going to get caught because this guy thought he was clever right he thought he could do 255 different transactions all over 10,000 to get to that number of 32 million to kind of you know dance around things and get away with shit but they're always watching they're always fucking watching and eventually they tied it all together anyway Law enforcement arrested Freeman in August 2021 as he was walking into his office in Midtown Manhattan. He was carrying a backpack and deposit bag. According to the court documents, the search of his apartment turned up um, 1.2 million in cash hidden in closets in UPS boxes. USPS boxes. Jesus Christ. During the subsequent investigation, the complaint says that law enforcement monitored the movements of another 1.5 million in Ireland's money transmitting business activities. Freeman pled guilty to mispris um, to misprison of felony for his role in the money transfer. Two of the money couriers brothers, Long was it Long Z Zhuang and Long Juan Zhuang, were also hit with criminal charges. Yo, Chinese men them have got money for sneakers, isn't it? 
Chinese men then probably spend way more Asian, well, specifically Chinese people, they might actually spend more money on designer goods, limited edition items than black people. I know black people get a bad rep for being flashy and wearing designer items, but I think Chinese people, they fundamentally care about designer stuff, limited edition stuff to a level that even a black person wouldn't, to be fair. The money they spend on stuff because imagine they were buying stuff from social status from a man mania from that guy from that witness guy right for resale prices and they were reselling off that's the thing you have to keep in mind they buy resale shoes for an exorbitant amount of money and then they sell them for more money than they purchased them for so they end up getting their money back even though they're selling them for crazy amounts because there's always somebody out there that wants that limited edition shoe doesn't want the hassle of queuing up that's one thing chinese people don't fuck about with chinese people do not like inconvenience they want to go somewhere buy the thing and go home they're not into the queue shit they don't want to wait around they've got the money they'll pay for it give me the thing so like middle eastern people right give me a new one give me this one give me that one you know what i mean give me four give me all of them like they just want their shit straight away no fucking around when prosecutors say, um, while prosecutors say the millions of dollars in transactions were at the behest of his companies, Whitner was not been charged. Deals of the civil forfeit complaint suggest that he knew something was awry in his reselling business. So this is really odd. He hasn't been charged yet. What's going on? Is he snitching? Most likely he's, he's cooperating, right? If he hasn't been charged, if he's the fucking main guy at the Whitner group and all of these other fucking businesses are under that umbrella which this guy is then you backdooring the shoes out of to sell to China and then doing a bit of money laundering, which is then funding criminal enterprises like fucking prostitution and maybe sex trafficking. Why wouldn't the witness be charged? Most likely he's probably involved in it. Most likely he's probably cooperating. You'd imagine that's why he hasn't been formally charged. The complaint, um, the complaint, sorry, describes a consensually monitored phone call a consensually how does that even mean um between freeman and whitner that took place in july 2022 prosecutors say that in this conversation the two discussed freeman's arrest and the seizure of fifty thousand men for the transaction with yg on that call witness said that he had a feeling something fishy was going on wow let's go back to the main article here i think it's got the actual details it breaks it down we see that's him right to be fair, he's got he's got a very you know what he kind of reminds me of. He reminds me a little bit of um, Idris Elba in in The Wire, right? He's got that look of that guy that's like he's about that life. He used to do some street shit, but now he's trying to go legit. But he's still got that street shit in him. He can't let it go because he's got a very successful business, stores, collaborations coming out of the wazoo, right? But he still is involving himself in illicit businesses. Why? You don't need to do it, brother, man. Come on. And this is a statement that they put out, right? The statement. Um, Whitaker Whit Whit Group official statement regarding the money laundering, right? The recent action by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of North Carolina comes with significant cooperation and good faith negotiations, a.k.a. snitching, on our part. To be clear... While we take the allegations of the complaint seriously, there are unfounded, unrelated to our business or to this community and unjustified. Our professional, our professional inventory management team runs a... Ah, oh, you, you threw the inventory management team under the bus. Man. Our professional inventory management team runs a transparent process built on systems that are both legally compliant and consistent with industry standards. We have also compiled, uh, complied sorry, with tax obligations annually. So basically, I pay my taxes and it wasn't me, it was my interns. <laughs> People love blaming the interns, isn't it? Interns don't even get paid. They don't get paid well. They get treated like fucking shit. They get worked around the clock. And then when stuff goes wrong, the boss always points to them like it's their fault. The fucking interns. We disagree with the USAO's allegations concerning our business and remain um, appreciative of the extraordinary support our vendor partners have shown and continue to show throughout this process. Our success has made us an easy target caught in the middle of a US financial and regulatory war with China of which we have no part in. Oh, it's the man. 
The man is trying to hold the black man down. BLM, March for George Floyd. These sneakers are going to end racism. Anti-racism shoes. What? What? Social status, social hierarchy. Oh, come on, man. We look forward to def uh, defending our business and operating model while we continue to proudly serve our biz com communities that have embraced us for the last 20 years. We scammed, we might be in trouble, but we're still going to run these numbers up. Jordan 5's dropping very soon, right? These Jordan 5s. I've been there pretty shit, to be fair. Everybody's getting hype over them, but I don't really see the hype. Obviously, the, the, the newer updated shape is quite nice. It's more of a mid. There's less padding on the tongue as well. They sit a bit nicer. Don't get me wrong, right? The Jordan 5 has been updated shape-wise. But I think these Dusk and Dawn fucking Amai Minia shoes are pretty shit, personally. I like the little bubble um, text on it with their logo in it. or Sorry, with their brand name. But I'm not, I don't really give a fuck about these shoes. Everyone's going wild for them online. But again, my, my algorithm is a bit fucked because sneaker twitter only really exists for fucking americans americans love jordans there's no jordan that they won't love no matter how boring the shape is no matter how fucking tired the colorways are they'll always wank over jordans but i think they're a little bit boring personally but yeah they're coming very soon let's go back to the fucking statement um this complaint will not deter us from continuing to tell our stories and to build a legacy of excellence and what and we will continue to vigorously defend our businesses and all that they contribute to culture, commerce and community. So I did not do it. I did not do it. So fast facts before we kind of seal this up and move on. James Whitner, notable businessman of owner of the Whitner Group, has been named in a civil complaint um, to forfeit for forfeiture regarding money laundering. The complex operation reportedly involved Chinese money couriers and a series of sophisticated financial transactions that flouted vital financial laws designed to prevent money laundering. According to the complaint, Whitner broke at least one business contract with a sneaker company based in Oregon, Nike, that explicitly forbids selling, shipping, or transferring goods sneakers to other countries. Now, just a point on that. You know who else is guilty of it? Yes, you guessed it, Marcus fucking Jordan, the son of Michael Jordan. He is guilty of fucking backdooring. He loves a good backdoor. There's evidence of him doing it. There's literal pictures of Marcus Jordan and his affiliates and his associates at fucking hotels loading up boxes of shoes into fucking unspecified white vans that don't look like they belong to Nike. Literally putting shoes into fucking vans. So if, they, if they're going to cash his Whitner guy, why isn't fucking Marcus Jordan on the chopping block also? Huh? Come on, bro. Um, the business conducted by Whitner, Freeman, and others involved in this scheme allowed them to profit from the transactions that violate US federal law. Between November 2017 and April 2022, there was alleged to be more than 255 occasions in which Whitney and his businesses and others involved received cash from the Chinese national named YG. These transactions totaled to 32 million. And when they went to that guy's house, they bust down his door, right? Look what they found. A table full of money like they're fucking Floyd Mayweather. Look at that. Jesus Christos. Um, the Whitney group, sorry, the, Whit the, the Whitaker group, Whitney group, the Whitaker group, issued a statement stating that it was cooperating with authorities snitching um in their investigation and the claims are unfounded at the time of writing james whitner and the whitaker group have not been charged with any crime in connection with this federal complaint but still they're involved so let's see how this one plays out it's very unfortunate like i said this guy is super successful got a thriving business got collaborations coming out of his ass nike don't stop working with him his stores are popping why do you need to do this i don't know for me it feels like greed um it's really silly really really dumb and thinking you could get away with it is dumb. Maybe doing this for your first meal to pay for a fucking new house or renovations, cool. But really racking up an amount up to fucking 32 million is just too much. You did too much. You got too greedy. You scammed. And eventually that shit bit you in the ass. So it's looking very, very peaky for them guys. It's looking very, very, very peaky for those guys. What can you do? What can you bloody, bloody do?